Quarterback Mike Kelly inserted for the first time last week against Denver. The move by Pepper Rogers plays big dividends. Defensively, linebacker John Corker regained his USFL Player of the Year status with sacks like these against the goal. The goal's run and shoot offense was in retreat most of this night. Pepper Rogers' club has been riding high. So tonight, it's the renewal of the USFL's great southern rivalry as the Memphis Showboats play host to the Birmingham Stallions. Expecting a crowd of some 35,000 on hand at the Liberty Bowl here in Memphis, Tennessee tonight as the Stallions come in to take on the Memphis Showboats. If you look at the standings in the Eastern Conference, it'll tell you just how big this game is, especially for Memphis. They're 5-5, five and five, two games down in the loss column, trailing three ball clubs. Our temperature, a brisk 62 degrees. The skies are clear. The wind blowing out of the north at 10 miles per hour. No chance of rain, so it will remain dry. Raleigh Dosh, the head coach of the Birmingham Stallions, has had to do more than just be a head coach. He admitted that to us earlier today. And, of course, his franchise has had some troubled times away from the field. But they've gotten through all of that. And Pepper Rogers, who has authored Pepper Ball, he's got this team all puffed up. He has always defied the odds. Rogers' is club now 5-5. Five and five. Marv, here are your keys to victory. How do you see it for both squads? Well, first of all, Birmingham has to pressure the passer. They've got to take the rhythm out of Memphis's game, and they'll help their own corners. They need to have the big play. They haven't had it. They've got the potential in Jim Smith and Cribs. They've won the turnover battles in the past that put them on top. They have to continue to do so. Memphis has to protect that passer. They were sacked 10 times in their previous meeting. That can't happen again. They have to have an effective running game. They have to have it for the running backs now that Walter Lewis is gone, and they have to win the turnover battle like Jacksonville did last week in defeating Birmingham. We should mention that Pepper Rogers has done a lot to orchestrate this uh, last couple of weeks of action that have been awfully good to him. He's made a lot of moves during the course of the year. There's Birmingham leading the series three games to none. In fact, the showboats haven't really been close. They were beaten 34-19 in their last meeting. The Stallions have outscored Memphis 123-45 to in three games. Here's a look at Danny Miller, who will be kicking off for Birmingham. They'll be in white, trimmed in red with the gold headgear, 5'10", out of Miami of Florida. Miller's had a pretty good year. Henry Williams, a guy they'll try to stay away from in terms of kicking off. He's an excellent return man. He's back deep. And he'll be joined back there by Derek Crawford and a couple of other up backs. But it's Williams. The dangerous one that's awaiting this kick. He gets it anyway. He got up to the 20, but you could tell they were trying to keep it away from him. Fletcher Llewellyn made the stop for Birmingham. Llewellyn was just activated for this game. Mike Kelly making his way onto the field. He's posted some good numbers, but the 16 of 30 last week was a key. And here's Walter Lewis in the game as well. We can watch for something strange. This is Pepper Ball. Opening play. about it before the game of course both quarterbacks in the game there's the way they lined up number 10 was Walter Lewis back behind the center designated by that X number 12 was Mike Kelly and he faked the handoff to Kelly we can take a look at the play again while it's snapped back in a sort of shotgun formation spread him out all over the field for a great broken field runner Harry Sidney gets a key block and Lewis gets a big game setting the tempo first and 10 at the 43 for Memphis Kelly fires incomplete. Intended for Moser. 
broken up by Dennis Woodbury. Offensively, at center will be Larry Rubens, Tyrone McGriff, and Ken Smith will be the guards. At the tackles, Luis Sharp and David Huffman. The tight end is Gary Shirk, a veteran of many wars. Derek Crawford will be the wide receiver. Moser, the flanker. Kelly, Sidney, and Spencer are the backfield. There's Walter Lewis, the leading ground gainer for the showboats. He's on the sidelines tonight. much there. Purifoy made the stop. Well, I'll tell you, Temper solved the quarterback controversy. He started both of them on that first play. <laughs> Third down and nine yards coming up. There are Spencer's numbers. He's been ailing of late. He's been trying to rehab some knee problems. And he hasn't come along as quickly as they'd like. It was a serious injury. He's worked hard at bringing it back. He's getting a little bit better, but he's not where he was during the past two seasons. Third and nine. Moser is picked off. Flags are down. That's Mickey Sutton with it. And then he fumbles. And they're going to give it to Memphis, or at least one official is. There's also that penalty flag that is going to figure into this, too, I'm sure, Tim. That's Ken Smith on top of it with a recovery. He and Larry Rubens were in the general area. Pass interference, number 21 on the defense. First out. Well, that was Dennis Woodbury interfering on, a, on the pass play. It was a hook pass going to Mosier, I believe. And uh, he did interfere coming in for it. You see the season stats on penalties. Memphis 53 times. Really? Birmingham 52. Both of them relatively low, Tim. One of them ranked second in the league and the other fourth in the league in the fewest number of penalties. And that's the mark of good, consistent ball control offensive team. Woodbury committed the infraction, but Sutton came up with the interception. That kid's a comer. Everyone feels that he's going to be a great player. Certainly Raleigh Dosh is high on Mickey Sutton in the defensive backfield for Birmingham. He's a little guy, only 5'9", but they play him a lot in place of a linebacker. Well, there's the yardage marked off. Down to the 41-yard line of Birmingham, so Memphis is in great shape now. Well, there are 15-yard penalties for pass, defensive pass interference in this league, and uh, all that uh, fumbling around of the ball meant little uh, what the pass interference flag is thrown. Crawford coming to the bottom of your screen. Moser to the top of your screen, out of an eye set. Mike Kelly under at quarterback. The showboats are steaming offensively here at the onset. Here we get a look at Moser. He's one-on-one -on -one covered by Dennis Woodbury, driving into the area that was vacated because the strong safety was covering the tight end in the flat. Moser's brought down, but Moser has been their consistently most productive receiver. They call him a possession receiver, but you look at him and you think that. He does look a little like Bolitnikov of old, but he's the guy they like to go deep with from time to time. First and ten. Kelly again. That's Rao, the tight end. In for Shirk, and David Dumars made the stop. You get a replay, and I notice how quickly Kelly is dealing off all of his passes. Here's a one, two, three step drop, really, and then deal it off. Pepper came in with the idea they were going to throw quick and short. They weren't going to challenge the middle where Chuck Clinton, who leads the league in interceptions, is very much, but that ball was thrown down a little bit very quickly to diminish the pass rush, too, is a great reason for that quick release. So far, seven plays on this drive. Four of them have been awfully big for the showboat. First and goal from the five. Play action. Touchdown. Row again. That was a beautifully executed drive. Row 
is wide open on this. There's a play action fake, fake of a sweep to Spencer. Charlie Cazal, you see Rouse standing all alone in the end zone. Whoever had hit him uncovered bit on the play fake, bit on the play fake, came after the run. Kelly again dealing off very quickly. Oh, he loved it, didn't he? This Mike Kelly, Duncan with the extra point. So far, Mike Kelly and his showboats are strutting their stuff here next to Beale Street. They lead 7-0. Memphis leads Birmingham 7-0 off some play action and a heck of an eight-play drive here. Again, the fake to number 46, Tim Spencer, who blocks the outside blitzer who's coming. Tim Rao all alone in the end zone. Either the strong safety or free safety would have coverage on him. And you don't know, it depends on the coverage, but whoever had it lost it. Mark Rowell with a touchdown reception. In fact, he has more catches than Gary Shirk. Duncan is kicking off. Back deep. Paul Ott Carruth and Thad McFadden. That's Carruth. Spun down at the 25 by Anthony Parker. First and 10 for the Stallions from that point. There's Cliff Stout, 56% completion rate. What a great year he had a season ago. Has been a bit inconsistent of late. Up front for him, he's got Battaglia and Sandin, along with Adelette at the guards. McKinley and Phoenix at the tackles will set the wide receivers in backfield in a moment. Cribs up to about the 29. Reggie White made the stop. Stout behind him, he has Cribs along with Joel Coles. Leon Perry was let go at the end of last week. So Coles draws the start. The wide receivers are Jim Smith and Ken Toller. Toller starting in place of Joey Jones. There are the numbers on Cribs in 85. The tight end is Robin Earl. Second down and seven from the 29 for the Stallions. They trail seven and other. bevy of showboats led by Sam Clancy. Clancy along with Reggie White and Calvin Clark. That's the front base of that 3-4. The linebackers, the outside backers are John Corker along with Carlton Rose. The inside linebackers, Steve Hammond along with Wolf Coakley. Coleman and Cade, Leonard Coleman and Mosey Cade, they're two standouts at each corner. And then Barney Bussey and Don Besselu recently acquired are the safeties for Pepper Rogers' club. Third down and four after the gain of three by Chris. To the right of your screen, he's coming around the outside now, number 90, putting great pressure on Stout, causing the pass to go awry. Bob Parsons will punt it away for Birmingham. Here's Henry Williams back deep. Williams at about his 25. Parsons should get it off around his 20. A soft one. Williams does have some room. at the 40-yard line by Bill Rowe. A timeout on the field in Memphis. The showboats lead the Stallions by seven. Well, here we see Williams with the ball. Pretty hard to tell. As Williams comes up here, he's tackled and driven to the ground. But now, there's Herbie Spencer, not on the showboats, on the Stallions doing a lot of roughing up. And somebody might have reacted to Spencer and, and got themselves a penalty for the showboats. Yeah, there was a, a ball thrown there. That was... Vanizak in the area. Memphis has it though with a first down. They mark it just outside the 22 yard line. Moser, another quick out pattern. Been working like clockwork. 
so far for Pepper Rogers, those quick ends and quick outs. This is what he wanted to come into the game doing to take the pressure off the pass run. Also, something very crucial here, Memphis has scored first. Birmingham usually outscores their opponents heavily in the first quarter, and if they do, they can stick with their ball control offense, but if they fall behind, they may have to leave their basic game plan. Kelly took his team 79 yards the last time he had control of the football. He looks at a second and five here. Spencer. About a yard away from the first down. Mike Perko made the stop for Birmingham. Defensively, the Stallions have Purifoy, Jackie Klein, Doug Smith, and Mike Perko. The linebackers, Kirby Spencer, Bill Rowe in the middle. Ken Kelly, the weak side linebacker. The corners are David Evans and Dennis Woodbury. We'll see a great deal of Mickey Sutton we already have. David Dumars along with Chuck Clanton in the defensive backfield. They're measuring here. Well, they were closer than a yard away, but still they have some terrain to cover before they come up with a first down. There's the animated Pepper Rogers. He's done everything but play the guitar at home. He's played the guitar on the road on the plane for his team. Dressed up like Doug Flutie once. Pepper is quite an entertainer. <laughs> Entertains his own team as well as the fans. Third down in less than a yard. That's Sydney. Should have the first down. Spencer on top of him. Well, he came up over the left side, but there was quite a bit of penetration by the defense on the play. Nevertheless, Sydney was able to do some squirming about. And it's going to be close, however. Now, they did not give him the kind of spot, at least, that the fans would like. Well, make one of those guesses from the sidelines that you shouldn't make when it's this close. That doesn't look to me like he made it. But we'll see. Here. Ooh. <laughs> He's an inch or two short. A millimeter away. Raleigh Dodge looking on. Coming up over the left side of his line, number 68, Tyrone McGriff in red, is driven back by a submarine charge by Doug Smith. Big tackle from Auburn, and he spills the play. It stopped right there, and that man, the man battle. Smith winning his charge, uh, out charging, I should say, Tyrone McGriff on that particular play. Bob Grupp will punt it away. Thad McFadden, who leads the United States Football League in punt returning. All waiting. He's at about his 30-yard line. really did appear that Sydney had come up with the first down originally and then when they remarked it and you could tell defensively it was a heck of a good call. Parsons shanked that one a bit. That will give McFadden some room. Up to the 43 before being spilled. Anthony Parker again down there to make first contact with him. We've got a timeout. The Memphis Showboats lead Birmingham here, seven to nothing. Here are the rest of the games coming up this weekend. Saturday, Tampa Bay at Los Angeles. You'll get that one right here on your source for sports. Then there's the Sunday schedule. Then Monday, Houston at Portland here on ESPN. That last punt, Tim, was not the kind of punt you want to kick to the best return man in the league. Uh, Thad McFadden leads the league, and it was a low line drive kick. He nearly broke it. Seven minutes and 25 seconds left in the first quarter. Birmingham trailing Memphis by a score of seven to nothing. Tim Brando and Marv Levy with you. We're happy you joined us. Some play action from Stout. Boy, does he have time. Had no one to throw to. Finally ran out of bounds, just shy of the 44. Play action really helps Birmingham on first down. We get another look at Reggie White right in the middle of your screen in red, playing nose tackle, being double teamed there by Sainton number 70. Joe Cribbs gets in on it, Buddy Adelette gets in on it, but Tagley was in it. They had four people take their shot at different times on Reggie White, and of course he didn't get to the pass. I don't know who was blocking the rest of them, by the way. <laughs> well, he had plenty of time to find a man. Second down and nine coming up. Robin Earl. Earl just shy of 
the first down. Or he may have it. We'll wait for the mark. Will Coakley, along with Leonard Coleman there to knock him out of bounds. Stout came back with a pattern. It wasn't the same play fake. With a pattern identical to the one he had the previous down when he should have thrown into the flat to Robert Earl and didn't. He realized his mistake this time came right to Earl. Raleigh Dosh has really had some depleted receivers of late. He's lost a bunch of them. Joey Jones, his mother, became seriously ill on the way here tonight, and he's not playing. Ken Toler is in for him. Mason is out of the lineup, so Robin Earl drawing the start at tight end. There's the bomb. He's looking for Smith. Intercepted inside the five, it appears. Yes. If it was going to be incomplete anyway, he was better off having it intercepted because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a on the defense. We've got a marker down. They may call it back. Coleman came up with it. He was fighting with Smith inside the five-yard line. Now they're apparently penalty on the play. Here's John Corker, number 53. Offside just before the snap. He's at the top of your screen. He was blitzing on the play. He was picked up. Wasn't a factor on the blitz, but the offside nullifies the interception. That wouldn't have been too bad because they're way down there five, but it's a first down. Yeah. Pepper Rogers unhappy perhaps a bit about that, but you're right. They would have been on their patio with the ball had he been given credit for the interception. First down and 10. Birmingham now at the Memphis 43. Setback. That's Cribs, and he gets it. He got away. He's got some room on the weak side. First down to the 26. Vestalu finally got him. Well, you can't draw a play like that as a coach. There's no way you can put that one on the blackboard. Reggie White had him stop. Great back like Joe Cribs. Pulled away. Reversed his field. Here you see he's trying to hit up over the right side. Takes a little counter step. He's wrapped up in there by White and gets spun around. Barney Bussey almost gets in on it. And the side of the field is denuded. Cribs knows where to go with it. They mark it at the 27-yard line. First and 10 Birmingham. They trail Memphis 7 to nothing with 5.45 to play in the first quarter. Toler's got it at the 18 and was he hit. The first guy that got him was Mosey Cade. Again, Toler, eight receptions for 150 yards, as we mentioned, pressed into duty tonight with the loss of Joey Jones. That was quite a grab by Toler. His uh, average per catch is pretty good, 18.8. Got good deep speed. It was a good catch. It takes a lot of courage and concentration to make that kind of catch. He got nine. It's second down and a yard to go. So Stout can exercise a lot of options here. He goes with the basic one. Inside the 15 to the 14, Joe Cribbs. Vesselu made the stop. That's Raleigh Dosh football, though, isn't it? Well, yes, and particularly here. That was an inside trap play, and what you look for down here a lot is safety blitzes. Everybody blowing up field, and they're easy to trap because they're not under control and reading the block. The defense isn't under control reading the blocking pattern. They're laying back their ears and coming up field. A trap is a good play at that part of the field. You either get nothing or you go all the way into the end zone. Memphis leading Birmingham by a touchdown, but the Stallions are on the move. First and ten. He's looking and close to the secondary receiver. That's Crib. Stopped at the 13 by Will Coakley. Coakley out of Kansas in his fourth year as a pro. Now, one of the standout players in the secondary all season for Memphis and probably unheralded because of Bossy Cade and Coleman and Barney Bussy. He made a fine play there. Bussy, uh, you see him number eight, dropping back in a deep zone to take away the end pattern. The ball's flared out wide, and he really turns it on. Runs all the way across the field to help get in on the tackle. He's not the primary tackler, but he would have been there had he broken the tackle. The ball carrier broke the tackle. Second and ten. Oh, option series here. Well, Reggie White's there. Sam Clancy, I beg your pardon. 
Now Clancy, about the same size as Reggie White, 6'7 and 260 pounds. He was not fooled that time. Another look, Stout take, makes a reverse pivot. Now he's going to come down the line and try and run an option against Carlton Rose. And I don't know why he didn't keep coming. Uh, he should have kept coming. He sort of pulled up and tried to duck inside and just that slight delay put Sam Clancy, who you see right there, in his face. Clancy has not played up to expectations this year. He's been tampered by a hamstring, looking pretty good tonight. You know, he didn't even play football in college. He was a basketball player at Pitt. He's become some pro in this league. Third and 13. That's Chris. Little showboat red given from Pussy and Company. Well, people will question that call, but last week in a very similar situation, Pepper Rogers ran a similar play and scored with 14 seconds left in the half. You hope to catch the defense playing pass and hope that a great back like Cripps can take it in. If not, they're going to try a field goal. When it doesn't work, I have to say it's surprising they didn't throw. <laughs> Danny Miller will try the field goal. Bob Lane will hold. It'll be a 31-yard attempt. He got it. With two minutes and 24 seconds, Raleigh Dodge Stallions have gotten on the board. They trail the showboats by four. The Birmingham Stallions, after a 31-yard field goal from Danny Miller, trail Memphis 7-3. Tim Brando and Marv Levy with you. The ESPN-USFL Friday night game of the week. We're happy you joined us. Again, they're trying to keep it away from Williams, but again, he gets it. He fumbles it. It's still free in the Stallions' house. It appears that Ken Kohler might be the guy that came up with it. Actually, the Birmingham plan in bouncing those kickoffs is just to destroy the rhythm. Here we see the ball bouncing. The blocking rhythm doesn't take place. Number 26, Ricky Porter, doesn't, not quite sure what to do. Now Williams coming upfield without the right kind of blocking. A hand comes in. The ball shoots loose. And turnovers, which have been so much a part of the Stallion's success, work to their advantage here, or at least should be. They have great field position on the 33-yard line. Ted Walton stripped it away. There you see the takeaway giveaway ratio. Birmingham easily on top in that category. They have an opportunity now to make good use of it. Stout looks, and there's Smith wide open. Touchdown. There's the big play. Marv, you mentioned it at the outset of the game. They needed it. Leonard Coleman was not within two steps of Smith that time. No, and that's the time that after you get a big turnover and you're going to go with big play. Here's Stout coming straight back, looking to his left, uh, to the, his right, I mean. But he's thinking Smith. Smith is one-on-one -on -one all the way there on Coleman. He hasn't beaten. It's a perfect pass. I had mentioned it to you right before the play. Look for Jim Smith. Another angle again. Stout just looking him off here. Plants right on rhythm. A beautifully lofted ball. Smith can beat any corner in this league, believe me. I think he's the finest wide receiver in the league. Yeah, I think you did say something about Smith. We've got markers down on the extra point attempt. So we'll see what happens there. Miller may have to come back. We'll wait. It does appear as though it's against Birmingham. Illegal formation, number 99 on the offense. That could be a multitude of things. A man could have not reported. He could have lined up off the line of scrimmage or too close to the line of scrimmage. For 99 is Ron Padgett. Normally a defensive lineman who they specialize in on these kicking teams. There's Jim Smith. Some believe that he's the best wide receiver in this league. 33 yards on the touchdown reception from Stout. Suddenly now Birmingham up by a deuce. They're looking for the three-point advantage here. And he missed it. Miller will argue the point. He doesn't believe it. Neither does Raleigh Dodge. A timeout with 144 left in the first quarter. It's a two-point lead for the Stallions. Birmingham leads by two, and Miller may have a reason to bark here, Marv. 
Well, here we see him kicking, and into the screen, running into him, is what Miller says was running into the kicker. Now, if the man came straight into him like that, Miller is correct. If, however, the wingback blocked the man into Miller, then the referee or the, any official would not throw a flag. That's his first extra point that he's missed all year. Eric Crawford now is back deep rather than Henry Williams. Comes to the short man. That's Parker. He's up to the 45-yard line. Thomas Boyd made the stop for Birmingham. Tim, that's one of the things you're risking you start using unusual kicks. There's some other good players on the field, too. And even though you break the rhythm, if the ball does get through everybody, fine. If it doesn't get through everybody, the team returning is going to have darn good field position, which Memphis has in this situation. Dosh relying on his defense. I guess that's a compliment. They are a pretty steady defense. The ball's at the 45 for the showboat. They trail 9-7. Glittering moments of the first quarter here. Marker's down all over the place. The pass was intended for Gary Shirk. Shirk in his 12th season from Moorhead State. <laughs> Played in the NFL, of course, and with the Memphis team of the WFL. 12 men on the field on the defense. confidence in your defense put an extra guy out there right well Raleigh is very distressed <laughs> that's right he's had two key plays now in very short order go against him an illegal formation by one of his players and now 12 men on the field and he's really disturbed first down with five to go now at midfield Raleigh Dosh expects the best from his team he's been a part of championship teams having been at Green Bay as an offensive line coach more notably, perhaps, with Chuck Noll at Pittsburgh during their glory year. Sydney gets it and doesn't get far. Herbie Spencer made the stop along with Purifoy. First and five is probably the heaviest running down you're going to get out in the field right here. Not a very likely passing down. You throw an incomplete pass and you're, you're sort of back in a second and five, which you don't have the advantage anymore. You run on first down in second and three now, and in good shape with a chance of having gotten the first down right there. Tim Spencer's come out of the game. Parker's clocked in, along with Sydney. Play action, the pass to Chirk for the first down. Now mark it at the 41-yard line. David Dumar is out of Northeast Louisiana University. Knocks him out, and Shirk is coming up a bit gimpy. Looks like he twisted his ankle just as he went out of bounds. Still working that very short pass game. Play action fake. They were playing a zone. The strong safety dropped relatively deep on the play. David Dumar did. So he immediately unloaded to Shirk. Dumar's reacted, but they had the first down. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Two seconds are left. Mickey Sutton with the open field tackle. And that's the end of the first quarter. Our score, the Birmingham Stallions, nine, the Memphis Showboat, seven. Back to Tennessee in a moment. A full moon here in Memphis, Tennessee, and opportunism reigns supreme for Birmingham as usual, making good use of a turnover on a kickoff to take a 9-7 lead over the Memphis Showboats as we start play here in the second quarter. It's been a heck of a game so far, Mark. Very good game. Both teams adhering to their stated game plans at the outset. Second down and four. Quite a run there by Ricky Porter. Chuck Clanton finally stopped him. They're getting some good work out of their so-called backup running backs, Porter and Parker. Porter doing a fine job here. Harry Sidney leading the blocking. They bring it back to Porter. There's a gaping hole on that side. He goes heading straight for where he should go, the goal line. We used to tell our running backs, you go that way, there's the goal line. You run sideways, there's the bench. Which would you rather, where would you rather be? <laughs> right. 
Sudbacks are split now behind Kelly. Sydney remains in the game along with Porter. Crawford to the top of your screen. In single coverage. Kelly. Incomplete marker slot. Dennis Woodbury will be called for interference, and Kelly loves it. It looked from up here as if Woodbury did wrap up Moser before the ball got to him. Now let's see if it's a call. Pass interference, number 21 on the defense. First down. Kelly was hit hard just as he released that ball, so that added to his glee a little bit. We have a player down on the Stallions. That's Jackie Klein, the left tackle in that four-man front in his fourth season from Alabama. That's a load, 6'5", 272 pounds. They have two very strong defensive tackles in that four-man line. While they attend to Klein, we'll tell you that the showboats are on a roll. They trail the Stallions by two. Balls at the eight-yard line now. Birmingham leading Memphis by a score of nine to seven, first and goal. Porter again, Ricky Porter, Dave Purifoy made the stop for Birmingham. That was a formation which said they're going to sprint to the right. Kelly starts out to the right, Porter taking it on a counter play with Huffman and also Ken Smith pulling, but they had it analyzed, they stopped it. This is a strong, tough defense that they're going against here. And the Stallions have moved the ball pretty well so far. This is a play action down, or a pass down, really. Bollinger has come into the game. Left guard for the Chilboats. Crawford went with the out pattern, and Kelly expected another move. He didn't well, get it. Well, what happened there, it was basically an out pattern. If the defender is off of you, if the defender is up crowding, the receiver is supposed to just take off, and you're going to try and lay it over him. You won't run the out. They misread it. Crawford felt that Evans was off of him. Kelly felt that he wasn't off of him. Kelly expected him to go up. Upfield. Third down and goal now at the nine. Crawford will go to the top of your screen as you view it. Porter and Parker are the setbacks. David Evans was caught in single coverage that time. And it's 13 to 9 in favor of Memphis now. Well, it is. It's the same pattern that Walter Lewis favored down here, by the way. There's quick slant in the Derek Cro uh, Crawford. Derek Crawford. Very good. One on one. Evans is looking in at the quarterback, rather at the man he's supposed, to, he's supposed to cover, which is a mistake. You can look in there if you're playing zone, but if you look at man, you better look at the man you're covering. Crawford's too quick anyway and beat him. Duncan's extra point is good. The showboats now lead Birmingham, 14 to from Memphis. Live Saturday, May 4th here on ESPN. Tampa Bay and Los Angeles coming up right here on your Source for Sports tomorrow. <laughs> there's, there's Derek Crawford. Hey, He's happy. Homespun star from Memphis State now in his third season. All out, Caruth takes it in at his 13. Mosey Cade knocked him out of bounds at the 25. The scoring drive, seven plays, 55 yards, 341 off the clock before the touchdown aerial Kelly to Crawford. They've had a couple of drives now, each of them taking just seven plays, and they've been awfully productive. They've been a juggernaut when they've had good field position, Marv, this Memphis uh, ball club. They certainly have, Tim, and they've worked that short passing game to perfection, mixing in the run effectively when they've had to. Birmingham relies on their defense to allow them to use their offensive game plan, and so far it hasn't been holding up well enough. Stout has not had a shabby night either. He's only missed on one attempt passing. Smith has got it at the 29. Mosey Cade there to wrap him up. He's 
enjoying a little bit with Mosi right there. Pepper Rogers talking with his offensive brain trust. You know, he lost his offensive coordinator. Charlie Waller left here a couple of weeks ago amid a great deal of controversy. He said, since that time, we've just been playing Pepper ball. Well, he sort of reassumed control of the offense, and those things happen. There are some uh, uh, taut nerves about this time of the year in coach. Second down and five for Birmingham, just shy of the 30. some room to perhaps run but can't get away from Calvin Clark. Stout has hurt Memphis on many occasions in the past with his scrambling ability. They just drop back and play a very pure zone coverage here. Nothing is really open. Stout can't find anything. He thinks he sees a crease up the left side, but great reaction there by Clark. Holds it to a very minimal game by Stout. Out of Purdue is Calvin Clark in his fourth professional season. Stout's not given enough credit for being a good runner. He has been able to chalk up some yardage. Third down and four now. Out of the shotgun. The pass was taken in by Joel Cole. Shy of the first down, it appears. Vesselu in on the stop. They had double covered both wide receivers on the play. When Stout saw it, he figured I can hit the back underneath, and he's got to run for a couple of yards. But a quick tackle turns it off, and they force Bob Parsons into this punting situation to a dangerous return man. Henry Williams is waiting for it. Remember now, the last time he touched it, he fumbled it on a kickoff return. Led Birmingham to its touchdown to take the lead at that time, nine to seven. Obviously kicking for the sidelines, Williams does get it and is promptly taken out of bounds at the 37-yard line. David Evans horse collared him there. We have a timeout on the field with 10:24 left. Donnie Vesselu and company feeling pretty good. They're up by five right now. First and ten. That one went for nothing. Herbie Spencer was in on the pile. Stacking up another Spencer. This one of Memphis infamy. I think he went wide of the hole here. He brings the ball back. The guard pulled. Trapped out. The hole is clogged. And Spencer tried to jump outside of the hole. There was nothing there. Spencer stopped Spencer on that one. Out of little Newberry College, Herb Spencer. He's a very productive player. He's got a lot of tackles, tied for number one in the club. Second down and 13 now for the showboat. <laughs> Kelly to Moser. Continuing to work that short game. Dumars took him down. They continue to work that short underneath game as we can see. And notice how quickly, one, two, three, four, five steps, a couple of stutters, he deals it off to an underneath pattern to Moser. It was a zone because number, or else a combination, number 22 came in. Number 61 in red, Ken Smith there picking up Malcolm Taylor on the pass block. He is quite, Ken Smith is an underrated player. We've seen him many weeks and he's performed very well as he did on that play. Third down and two now for Memphis. A possession down here, setbacks are split. Play action again. Shirk, first down. And he took quite a blow from Chuck Clanton. Clanton, the interceptor and the hitman in that Birmingham defensive backfield. And the fans love Shirk's steadiness here. Replay again. Another play action pass in short yardage. They had one on the goal line that scored for him earlier to Rao. He deals it off. We get the first down. The coach says, the coach says, gee, that's great. Shirk says, wait a minute, it's okay, but not that great. But they did pick up the first down. By the way, that was not Malcolm Taylor in the previous down that Ken Smith was blocking against. It was Mike Sinetta, number 90. First and 10, just shy of midfield. A little razzle dazzle to Crawford. He had some blocking in front of him. Clanton made the stop, but that one looks as if it may go just a bit further. 
Well, it did. It's a fake of an inside play on first and ten, and then the wide receiver took one step downfield to get Evans off of him. Evans is a little bit afraid of him now. Comes back, receives the ball, and a swift player like that can be very dangerous with some good blocking out in front of him by a pulling lineman. Louise Sharp was trying to provide the room for Crawford there. By the way, Gary Shirk has gone into the locker room getting some stitches on his chin after taking that blow from Clanton earlier. Inside handoff, not a lot of room that time. Oh, you just do not run into that Birmingham defensive forward wall and get a lot of yards that often. That time it was Spencer, bottled up after a couple of yards, second down and eight. They're very difficult to run against. They give you more and varied defensive looks than any other team in the United States Football League. All types of combinations of alignments and of personnel. A lot of two linebacker defenses or three linemen, three linebackers, five defensive backs. You have to audibleize a great deal against them in order to, when you see a weak spot, to try and attack. Second down and a long eight for Memphis. Kelly with time. That's Parker. Quentin again right on top of him to put the clamps on him. It'll be third and three after a gain of five. You talk about offensive schemes, but in order to have an offensive scheme, if you're Raleigh Dosh, you have to get good defensive play, and that sets it up for Birmingham game in and game out. There's no such thing, Tim, as an offensive game plan that's going to work if your defense doesn't play well. If they don't play well, you're struggling to get back in the game all the time, and all those offensive plans go out the window. With a good defense, you now have an offensive plan that you can put into effect. If it doesn't succeed this series, you're still in the game next series to do it. Animated Pepper Rogers with Walter Lewis by his side, looking on, third and three. Kelly has his man again. That's Moser. Dumar stopped him, the crowd loves it, and Memphis's drive continues. Here we see Moser again, he's starting to come in. He's a man in motion. The ball is snapped, he starts to drive upfield, and then breaks back to the outside. Again, the short pass game. Kelly, and this is why he has to execute a short pass game here. Because there's the ball delivered, and there's somebody down around his legs already taking him to the ground. If they start throwing a lot of deep patterns, the same thing's going to happen to them that happened in their previous game when they got sacked so many times. This has been a great show offensively for both quarterbacks. Stout having a good night. Kelly, 10 of 12 at the outset of this game. 5.22 left to play in the first half. Anthony Parker, Spencer, and on the stop for Birmingham. They're getting an awful lot of mileage, the showboats are, from those two backup running backs. Anthony Parker and Ricky Porter are, are carrying a bigger and bigger load each week, and I think they're trying to take the load off of Tim Spencer and let Spencer work back in and gain his confidence and eventually blossom back to where he was. Walter Lewis, the leading ground gainer for this uh, club, still has the longest gain from scrimmage off the, the Pepper Pet play. First play of the game. Second and five. Another first down inside the 10. Ricky Porter this time. Ken Kelly made the stop for Birmingham. Good blocking adjustment by the Memphis offensive line. An inside linebacker and a strong safety try to blitz. They block down on him, pick him up. Bill Rowe is over there, gets a good lick, doesn't make the stop. And again, they get a good chunk of yards on the play. That may be the only way you run against this club. Pitch outs to the right or the left with some help from pulling guards. Well, uh, when they're blitzing up the middle like that, you're either going to trap them and hope you pop one, or else block everybody down and get to the outside. First and goal at the nine. Setbacks are split. Crawford at the top of your screen. Kelly. Corral. Filled at the three-yard line. Bill Rowe was there, the awfully active middle linebacker for Birmingham. Here we see ground level shot again. Kelly coming back, a blitz by the outside by the strong safety. Dumars is picked up. He drills the ball in good and low. Bill Rowe there to make the tackle, but Rao caught the ball. And they continue to move it with that 
finely executed, scalpel-like short passing game. Kelly will take time out to go talk to the surgeon, right? Pepper Rogers is the maestro tonight. He's been pulling all the strings in Memphis. Well, he's having fun. And as a head coach, I think you have to involve yourself heavily in one section of the game, whether it's offense, defense, or kicking. Kelly has hit 13 out of 15 passes tonight for 120 yards. Quite a performance. Second down and three. I think they're going to run here, too. So does Birmingham. They didn't. And they would have had a touchdown. Ralph slipped. He couldn't get his balance in the end zone. Actually, actually that play was designed on the off the inside fake for Kelly to really get wide and attack the corner and has the option to run her pass. The defensive corner blitzed on a wide angle and contained and made him throw earlier than he would have liked to. Took away the run option completely. Raleigh Dosh, you got to believe defensing this, this club from Memphis tonight is pretty difficult because they've been throwing everything but the kitchen sink at Birmingham. Just over three minutes to play in the first half. The showboats trying to pad their lead here. Third and three. Spencer Lawson. Mickey Sutton was in the general area. He may not have gotten into the end zone had he come up with it, but it should be field goal time for Alan Duncan. Kelly's upset with himself. Well, it was a tough ball to catch the way he threw it. He did hit him on the hands, but the receiver was going away from him and had to look back very sharply over his shoulders. He put it in his back ear, over his back ear, making it a difficult catch. Not a lot of room, though, for Spencer once he turned around, even if he had come up with it. That would have been a battle between Spencer and Sutton, as you had pointed out. 20 to 29 is a good distance for this guy. It would give Memphis an eight-point lead. From 20 yards, he nails it. are happy about Alan Duncan, a guy that was cut after a game just a few weeks ago, then returned, won a football game, missed a few kicks against New Jersey. He's been on a bit of a roller coaster ride himself. He's been up and down, but most of those kickers are. It takes quite a while or a tremendously successful season before they can establish themselves. But when a kicker is having a little trouble, I used to really hope, I hope he gets a couple of short ones, really short ones. If he makes them, it bolsters his confidence, and if he can't make those, it makes my decision easy but in terms of bringing back another player. Look at this. First half dominance for Birmingham. In both games, they got off to great starts. This time, they're down 17-9, to 9, so that may tell us something in the second half. Well, certainly this pattern is different from the previous games between these two teams. Memphis leading Birmingham 17-9. to 9. Three minutes left in the first half. There's Mark Rao getting instructions from Pepper Rogers. Alan Duncan will tee it up. Back deep. Paul Ott Carew. And also there with him, I think it's Thad McFadden, Thad number, McFadden the number one receiver. He's great on punts. Let's see how he handles this kick. McFadden up to the 31 yard line. Parker and Porter both were there to make the stop. Like that looked pretty good to me on that. Yeah. They think he'll be a heck of a receiver someday soon, too. That McFadden. Raleigh was saying that today. He's very pleased with him as a kick returner and said and, and he went out of his way to make the point you've just made now. Two minutes and 45 seconds left in the half. Birmingham trailing 17 to 9. We're on ESPN. USFL action on this beautiful Friday night in Memphis, Tennessee. Jim Brando and Mark Levy with you. We're happy you joined us. Cribs the lone setback for Stout. That's Jim Smith wisely going out of bounds at the 39. Porker and Hammond were in the general area. Smith took the easy way out. They're playing a little bit looser. Stout coming back. Stout does a good job of reading the entire field. He looks downfield for his wide receiver. Sees that there's been a deep drop to take it away. So it knows that Smith is coming across underneath and hits him there very effectively. And Smith steps out of bounds, kills the clock, and doesn't take that lick from Porker that was coming up. That's 
Smith is in the slot now. Cribbs gets it. Pretty good yardage. He's up to the 44. Well, Tim, they're using three wide receivers, which says to the defense, we're, we're in a passing formation. We're going to drill. So the defense does loosen, and a trap play is pretty good. I don't know if they'll get another playoff or not. they got about five seconds. Before we get the two-minute warning, and Stout's already headed to the sideline. Cliff Stout trying to lead his team down the field to get within one before the end of the half. They trail it now, 17-9. to nine. Thank you very much. The Memphis Showboats are leading the Birmingham Stallions here, 17 to 9. Two minutes left to play in the first half. Joe Cribbs having a decent night tonight. Six carries for Cribbs, 36 yards. He's back there now, blocking for Stout out of the shotgun. He gets it to midfield, the 40, the 30, and down at the 28. Bestelou finally got him. That's amazing. This is where Cribbs is so effective as a screen pass receiver or any type of pass receiver. But you can't let this happen defensively with this much time left. Just a little chuck out to the side to a running back who breaks so many tackles, gets some good blocking out in front. Cribbs really bursts through a crease. For a moment there, it appeared he was on to pay dirt. First and ten, Stout. Finds Toler. Stopped at the 15. Barney Bussey and Don Besselu both were there. So now the Stallions trying to make some noise before the end of the half. Both clubs have two timeouts left with 1.35 to play in the half. They've got plenty of time to ring everything out of this drive to make the touchdown attempt and still kick a field goal without hurrying at all. This is quite an atmosphere here in Memphis, isn't it? from Porker there. He nearly did. I'm surprised he didn't get himself out of bounds, however. Still, there's not that much of a press with two timeouts remaining. A sack does stop the clock until the receivers return to the huddle, but now it's running again. It's down about a minute and five at this point. Loss of five, second down and 15 coming up for the Birmingham Stallion. Porker trying to pick up from where he left off in last week's win against Denver. Toler and no it's going to be Schmidt he stopped at the 15 yard line Hammond there to make the stop here again we see Jim Smith right in the middle of your screen number 86 going against his own defense running a short hook route it was his own, a quick reaction by the defense, Steve Hammond. 36 seconds left, third and 10. Touchdown, Smith! Boy, you could see that one coming. Bussey and Besselu were crossed up in coverage. And now, Birmingham just a point away. Well, we get a replay here. Stout has a lot of time to throw this ball. He's getting excellent protection up front by the inlet number 78. Fills the ball just over the hands of the linebacker you see there taking a shot at it. Now, here's Jim Smith, right in the middle of your screen, moving to the left, taking an inside break. I believe, I believe Besselu had inside coverage on him while Bussy had outside coverage. And when he broke to the inside, the outside fake throws Besselu. That's quite a drive to pull off in the last two minutes when you're down by, would have been down by eight points. Just 30 seconds left. Jim Smith with the touchdown reception. And they're down by two, and it appears now that they'll be going for two. Well, I would, I would guess this is a type of situation where you usually would go for two points. Now, why not? Well, 
Well, of course, it's two points, dies at one point, leaves them a, a point behind. It all depends on the coach sees it and says, I want the sure point still. There's going to be more scoring on both sides. Nevertheless, the conventional wisdom says <laughs> go for two. <laughs> That's right. And you and I are both conventional believe that, in this instance, believe that he ought to. Oh, that guy's not conventional. Pepper <laughs> Rogers? <laughs> no, he sure isn't. He's not happy either right no. now. You're right. Stout took a little heat on that uh, particular play as well. Well, yes, he did. Here we see him getting ready to throw Calvin Clark. Really lets him have it. He just wants to know what happened to the ball. Clark didn't bother him too much. He sees from the ground what happened. Gets up and does the politician job and shakes hands with the offensive lineman. That's right. Pat Sandin was there to say, no, no problem, Cliff. It got in. <laughs> Going for two, there's Stout in the game with his regular personnel. We've got two tight ends in the game now, Jim Brown and Robin Earl. Cribs the lone setback. Toller to the top of your screen. That's Toller. No signal as you haven't called it. No, they haven't. Still haven't called it. Dallas may throw the red flag here. Yep, they're giving him it. Yes. Well, we may see a red flag from Pepper just because. What do you got to lose with 30 seconds to go? Toller had extended himself, but his feet were in the end zone, it appeared, from our vantage point. Well, let's take a look. Stout really wanted to go to his left. He still wants to go to his left. Sees Toller, caught the ball. No, he's in. He's in. I don't have the great angle on it, but he comes down definitely over the plane of the goal line when he settles. So Ken Toller takes in the two-pointer. Smith got the touchdown, and we're tied at 17. Rush has gotten a lot of support from President Gary Sklar in what has really been a very, very difficult time for this organization. He says most teams play to win. We, we play to eat, especially the last few weeks. They'll squib it. Sidney gets it. Harry Sidney up to the 43. Now, with 25 seconds left, you sacrifice field position again. Ted Walton made the stop for Birmingham. I, I agree. That kick really gives the showboats a legitimate opportunity to move into field goal position here. They have they have a couple of timeouts remaining to them. They've got the ball right up around across their 40-yard line, a completion or two, and they've got a chance for a, a, a field goal. If you're going to squib it, I guys always misunderstood squib. Squib it deep. Squib it deep. <laughs> Kelly has Parker and Porter in his backfield. Crawford at the top of your screen. That's Moser in motion. He has time. Taken there by Parker, Anthony Parker, and a timeout is called with a ball at midfield. 15 seconds left, and just as you said, Marv, still plenty of time. Well, there's time. They can get off, uh, particularly with a timeout remaining to them. Closer to the bottom of your screen. Time remaining, you see at the top. Kelly. Oh, he's got him. Flags go down in the backfield. We may have roughing the passer coming up here, perhaps, or holding. We'll have to wait and see in the Memphis backfield. Usually one of the two. They're walking back, so it looks uh, like it's probably a Memphis. Unnecessary roughness, number 67, the offense. Louis Sharp. Sharp just obtained from St. Louis, of course. He was the number one round draft pick out of UCLA in his fifth season as a pro. Sharp there, he was saying, did you see what he did to me first? That's probably what he was saying, and Kelly was saying something a little stronger than that. That pass across the middle to Moser has been set up so nicely by those out patterns that they've been using throughout the course of the first half. Well, they, they have. Th that was a situation, however, where they had to go deep. They felt they had to go down the middle. They could afford to risk an interception there in order to try and get closer. He really laid the ball right over the linebackers into the crease of a deep dropping zone there. Well, that pretty much takes Birmingham out of trouble, you'd think, with seven seconds left in terms of giving up a field goal. Now, we know there's one play remaining at least for Memphis. 
This is where you throw deep and hope you get a lucky bounce or pass interference. It said pass interference would only be a 15-yarder here. Picked off by Spencer, Herbie Spencer. There's a little lateral to David Evans. A little Cal Berkeley action there coming at the end of the first half. <laughs> Yeah, they played it better than Stanford Band on defense. And we have a little more action along the sideline, and the Memphis sidelines has made its way over to Birmingham. These two clubs really don't like one another. There's a lot of ill will here as we come down to the end of the half. Yeah, they don't like each other. Front offices aren't too happy with one another either over the Joe Cribb signing a few years ago. We're at halftime. It's been a great one. Pepper ball against Raleigh Dosh's consistent possession, opportunism brand of football. We're tied at 17 at halftime. Jim Smith has had an outstanding evening. Five receptions, 66 yards, two touchdowns. He certainly is the big play guy if Birmingham is to come up with a number of them during the course of any one game. Yes, and they, they're, they're, there's the other one, Joe Cribbs. They're, they're two big play people, along with Joey Jones, who is not in the game tonight because of an illness in his family. His mother, on the way over, suffered a stroke, and uh, he had to go and be with her, and our best wishes go out to Joey and his family. Harry Sidney there from the Memphis Show Boats looking on. They really have spread the wealth, the Memphis running backs. There's another one of them right there, and uh, Ricky Porter. They have gotten those 53 yards from all four of those guys. Well, it's a very unselfish type of offense that they seem to have right now. They are spreading it around, as you say. A lot of guys are catching, and a lot of guys are carrying. Duncan kicks off. Bad McFadden has it. Dances and prances to the 27-yard line. Making the stop, Steve Bearden for Memphis. Cliff Stout coming back out on the field. Completed 11 passes in a row in the first half. He and his counterpart, Mike Kelly, have put on a clinic. You get the feeling that Smith and Stout, because of their background, and the NFL, they know one another so well, they have a feel for one another from time to time. They just smell a big play. First and 10 from the 27. There he is. Smith's got it. Between two defenders, both Besselou and Coleman, it's up to the 38-yard line for the first down. Smith is split wide to his own left out here. You see him start to drive up field hard, then he runs a good, sharp, slanted break in there, and the ball's a little bit further in front of him than he had wanted it to be with those two guys converging. But his concentration remains keen, and he grabs the ball. Those two guys have played a lot of catch together after practice. You can rely on that. Setbacks are split. Toller up at the top of your screen. Spun down hard at the 41-yard line. Vesselu again there. That is a favorite play of the Birmingham Stallions, just as it was of the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's the fullback trap to the weak side. Franco Harris ran it so well for the Steelers. And this club, under Raleigh Dodge, who coached five years, you see Raleigh there as the line coach of the Steelers, is running the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. That guy with him, Carruth, has a great future out of the state of Mississippi, recruited in college as a quarterback by many. Alabama got him, and they made a running back out of him. Second down and six. Stout. Tried for the hook slide and then thought better of that maneuver and is stopped by Besselou. Apparently a little shy of the first down. On the previous play, they trapped the defensive end. So now Clark is coming down hard, hoping not to be trapped again. Stout rolls to the outside and gets some very effective blocking and a little bit of holding on the outside <laughs> by Jim Smith. They've got an outstanding front line, Raleigh Dosh's team. He's very high on Sandin and Buddy Adelette, the two guards. Vitaly is his center. On first and ten, Robin Earl fumbles it. Mosey Kane has got it. Vesselu made the hit and Kane came up 
hold it. Quite a hit there to shake the ball loose from Robin Earl. Bossy Cage picked it up on the bounce and was off. Another look at it. Fake of a trap play here to Joe Cribbs. And a quick pump and a shot goes there. And there's the hit to knock it loose right there by number 47, Don Besselow. Bossy Cage picks it up. And he's trapped, at least he's slowed by Cliff Stout and finally tackled by Ken Toller. Stout got over there and didn't want to see that turn into a touchdown. What a one-two punch. Cade, a number one round draft pick in the NFL. They got him over here this year along with Coleman. And now with the experience of Besselu, that one-two punch came through. There's Sidney carrying the, the ball down inside the 20 to the 17. certainly understand why he had his club moving and moving rather well up until that fumble given up by Earl well that's the first turnover for the Stallions and it wasn't Stout really that turned it over he clicked on a well executed pass play first down pass as well second down and six out of an eye Kelly Dumars with the coverage and the crowd wanted a flag, they won't get it. No, they won't. He played it well. He was, he was right with him. Here's the delivery by Kelly. We'll get a look right now. Dumars goes in just as the ball comes, bring it down. I wouldn't call it interference. I think they get called too often on interference anyway, but I'm prejudiced along those lines that I have been for years. Yeah, you work with George Allen. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Third and six. Well, they make it too tough for the defense. <laughs> Crawford at the top of your screen. Sydney! Touchdown! Here in the land of cotton, he had a lot of terrain to cover. Yes, he did. There's a slant charge there. It was an audible, a good trap block by Ken Smith, number 61. Some fine running by Sidney Kim Spencer downfield, looking for someone to block, at least being in the way. Well executed, and it was an audible call where he picked up something in the defense and told him to call it. Duncan's kick is good. And just as in the first half, the showboats begin steaming and open up with some thunder. They lead by a score of 24 to 17. The Memphis fans love it. Their club up by seven. Caruth is back in the end zone and there's more reason to cheer now. Well, that's something they've been looking for out of Alan Duncan. Stronger leg on the kickoff. There's a pretty good breeze tonight. It's hard to tell which way it's going. <laughs> Pepper, get pumped up, will you? <laughs> he not only puts on a show, he applauds for himself when, it, when the act is over. He won't get Best Dressed Coach of the Year award, but he's happy enough right now. Stout's completion percentage. Well, it was a good throw and a good call last night, but doing what's right, there's no assurance that misfortune isn't going to hit anyway. First and ten. There's Krebs. He's had a good night so far. He has eight more. Hammond again in on the action, along with Leonard Coleman. Hammond may be one of the more under-publicized linebackers in the USFL. He is. He is tied for the lead coming into this game and tackles along with Reggie White, but he had missed about three or four games. He's been their leading tackler in previous seasons, and he has really impressed me over the past several weeks as we've watched him play. Stays in on nickel defense, plays every down. Harry Sidney just happy to be a showboat on the sideline. Second down and three coming up for the Stallions. Stout was in trouble right from the beginning of that play. Blitzing linebackers and then some. Vestalu was also coming. Carlton Rose. 
in on the action. That play just had no chance to develop. It'll be third down and three. Carruth was the intended receiver. Well, it was a play action pass and a blitz against the play action pass is sensational because you're not going to be fooled by it. You're not going to say that a runner is a pass and you're supposed to blitz. You're just coming and you're more difficult to pick up as the back is faking rather than looking for blocking all the way. Third down and three for Birmingham. They trail 24 to 17 with just over 10 minutes to play in the third quarter here in Memphis. Stout has room. Dragged down by Hammond again. Hammond nearly got him before he had room to pick up the first down, but he stumbled forward. I'll tell you, if he didn't get him, they would have been in big trouble. Hammond starts to blitz. It's a bootleg. He's got a lot of room in front of him there, and Hammond just rakes down his legs and trips him up, or he would have had a very sizable gain. It was man-to-man -man coverage. The defenders had run way off of the receivers who were going deep. He has great speed, and it's fifth year out of way far. Stout is not that slow a foot. First down and 10. The ball at the 33. Birmingham. Cribs is stacked up after a couple. Corker along with White making the stop. Tim, Memphis is letting it all hang out here early in the going in the second half. They are blitzing just about every down. They're bringing safety men. That time they brought Corker. The down before they brought Hammond. They had all 11 men right at the line of scrimmage. All of a sudden, they're using a much more aggressive style in the second half, hoping that Birmingham tried to make adjustments to what they were seeing in the first half. Apparently an official's time out here. Birmingham had owned a perfect 8-0 mark against last year's expansions club, expansion clubs, but now they've lost a couple of, a couple of games this season to expansion clubs. Teams like San Antonio and Jacksonville. Here's another one tonight. Complete to Robin Earl. Up to about the 43, maybe the 44-yard line. Close to another first down. On a second and eight play. Stout again had plenty of time. Robin Earl fighting very hard for that yardage. I'm sure he's trying to atone for the fumble that occurred and helped set up the Memphis go-ahead touchdown a little while ago. We have an injured showboat. It's hard to pick up exactly who it is right now. A little Southern hospitality. Here tonight from Memphis, Tennessee. Showboats leading 24 to 17. First and 10 now for Birmingham. Griff to the 48. Brett Williams, who came into the game for White, along with Carlton Rose, in on the stop for the showboat. You know, these quarterbacks, Tim, are having remarkable nights, and the offenses are, considering the intensity with which the defenses are playing, these aren't just defenses that are out there to be pushed around. They're playing very hard. Second down, seven yards to go, with 7.35 to play in the third quarter. The showboats have already come up with a touchdown from Harry Sidney to start things here in the third quarter. Polar's got it, and it's another first down for the Stallions. Mosey Cade caught in single coverage with him, making a stop at the 41-yard line. They are, they are blitzing, as we said, and we get a big blitz on the backside, and that play action fake the Coles. It's a slant in pattern to uh, Toler. Cade was playing off him a little bit. Barney Bussey, strong safety, is also blitzing now to the front side. Memphis is playing a very daring style of defense. You can get hurt badly doing this. The ball's now at the 42. That's where they marked it. First and 10. Stout's going up top again. And there is Smith again. Smith falling down in the end zone. Pass is incomplete. Been some inadvertent contact in the end zone, but no reason for a flag. Second and ten. Memphis doing some good guessing. They're expecting to get man to man, but they're playing a deep zone now. Coleman has them in the outside. You'll see the, the free safety come into the picture. It's a strong Barney Bussey. Barney Bussey is a strong safety. Rotating back to help out against Smith. And there is some contact there. In fact, it might that might have been something that would have been called, but a lot of people going for the ball. 
incidental is what they call it if you're a defensive coach, right? You don't call it incidental if you're the guy that gets run into, however. <laughs> Second and ten. Cribs again. Good blocking for him. He's to the 35. He's getting five and six yards at a chunk now. Fussy was there to trip him up. Fussy again came a long way to put on a tough lick, and Joe Cribs felt that one. He's still on the turf. Corker actually was involved in that play. Here we see John Corker in red going down with the blocking fake, allowing Cribs to get to the outside. Now Corker pursuing back out. Bushy gets the first shot, and Corker slams him to the ground afterward. Third down and three. Birmingham has come up with some good third down plays tonight. They're at the 40-yard line, or checked at the 35 of Memphis. Kohler's got it, and it's another first down. Kohler has become Birmingham's Moser so far in this game. Kohler has stepped in and done a remarkable job. Again, it's a fake of the trap. It's third and three. They want you to think run. He's looking back really for Earl, but Earl is covered by Bussey, and he throws it out there without a full arm action to Toller. Cade closes quickly, but his cushion was a little bit too much. The showboats have utilized Moser in much the same fashion as Birmingham has used Kohler. Very much so. 5.20 left to play in the third quarter. 24-17 Memphis. First and ten. room that time. Calvin Clark. That was a big hit by Clark on the trap play. Which is the trademark play for this club. 6'4", 252 pounds is Clark in his fourth year as a pro out of Purdue. Pepper there a moment ago in his uh, windy night hairdo. Yeah. <laughs> it's going from animated to docile, right? Rogers to Dodge. <laughs> Second down and nine. The ball just on the 30-yard line out of Memphis. Smith has it. Mosey Cade brings him down. Gain of about four. They'll mark it at the 26, where it will be third down and four yards coming up. One of these times soon now, Cade is starting to close faster and faster. You might look for Toller on an out, stout pump as if to throw to him, try to get Cade come up to make the stop and then turn Toller upfield and go for broke. But out now. Both teams have cashed in on their opportunities when they've had them. Birmingham mounting really its first long drive of the game, perhaps. Third and five. with excellent coverage that time. Bowman had excellent position. Stout really wanted to put the ball further to the outside. When a man has coverage like that, you expect to throw it outside towards the sideline, the receiver out of fade. But he was falling away when he did it. And uh, he jumps up and tried to get a little of that uh, bowler's <laughs> English on it. Put a little, lean. Put a little yeah. lean on that one. That's right. Danny Miller will try the field goal now. From 40 to 49, he's pretty good. This one will be from 44. Wide to the right side. There's a crosswind, Tim. It was true off his foot, but blew to the left of the upright. With 3.38 to play in the third quarter, Pepper Ball on top by a touchdown. Both men throwing just four incompletions each, both two touchdowns, and the one interception Kelly threw was insignificant. There's seven seconds left in the half, and he's just throwing a desperation pass. They have been very sharp tonight, and one of Stout's turnovers, in fact, came on a completion. Mike Kelly inserted just a week ago for Walter Lewis, even though Lewis had all those great numbers. So far, it's paid off big for Pepper Rogers and Stack. First and 10 from the 21. That's Porter. Ricky Porter from Slippery Rock, and he is a slippery one. Beyond the 40 to the 41 for the first down, Sutton made the stop. 
He fakes to Porter, has downfield men he can throw to. They're covered. Everybody's dropped deep. You see Bill Rowe, the linebacker, way deep. They throw it in front of Porter. Nicky Sutton finally does make the stop on him. First and 10 with the ball now at the 41-yard line. Memphis leading by a touchdown. Porter again. Up to the 47. Chuck Clanton made the hit. There's Cribs along the sideline. He left limping earlier after that last series for Birmingham. Here's Ricky Porter at tailback. Just a basic toss, but it's going to go off tackle. They want you to think it's a sweep. Pull everybody wide. There's Bill Rowe again, 52, making the initial hit on the tackle. Rowe is their leading tackler. Spencer is number two. Herbert Spencer. Second down and five. Memphis from their own 47. That was Harry Sidney up to midfield. Sidney of the four backs, perhaps the guy that can spring them most quickly. Bill Rowe made the stop. We certainly saw that in evidence in the last Memphis possession. All of a sudden, a little bit of a change up in tempo by Memphis. Two plays in a row, real quick snaps, basic running plays. Grand strike quickly. They're mixing their game very well. Third down and two. Bill Rose view there. Kelly. Now that one was nearly picked off by Dumars off the tip drill. Had he come up with it, it would have been six for Birmingham. As it is, it's fourth down, and it'll be a punt formation for the Memphis Showboats. Bob Grupp will come on. Just his second punt of the night coming up. Remember, though, he hit it big, but it was a line driver. That's right. I was just going to say that the 43 looks impressive, but it was too low a punt, and it came back almost as fast as it went out there. And why? Because McFadden is back there, and he leads the league in this department. He called a fair catch there. I'll tell you, a little more body lean that time, and Memphis would have had Birmingham down on the one-yard line. It did get into the end zone. It touched the line. It's what the official rules, and if it touches the line, the line is in the end zone. We have a timeout. Just over a minute left in the third quarter. Memphis leads Birmingham. 24 to 17. Birmingham's possession at their own 20. Earl Gann is in the game for Cribs. Stout looking. Got away from Bussey. Nearly found his man, Joel Cole. I don't know if that was his man at the outset. <laughs> There's a lot of scrambling around. All went for naught. Stout gets around back there, though. Eh? People just do not give him the kind of credit in terms of eluding would-be tacklers in his backfield. They certainly don't, particularly for a man who's nine years in professional football. A six-foot-four-inch quarterback who does not have a low center of gravity, which would help him elude. He gets away very well. Out of Youngstown State. Many believe the premier quarterback in this league. There have been a few arguments, of course. Stout coming this way to Earl. Vestalu with a nice stop. Well, you really see the old Miami Dolphins coming out. The, the veterans of the, these many wars can come through. And Vestalu that time showed you why. They, they picked him up a couple of weeks ago to shore up their defensive backfield. This is a standard trick play. You fake a sweep. The tight end comes all the way from the right side across the formation to the left. Vestalu and Steve Hammond both read it, however, and reacted to it. Stout stumbled a bit, however, when he made the initial fake to the running back, and that threw the rhythm of the playoff. Third and four, the ball at the 26. Incomplete for Smith. Stout threw through three defenders that time. Jim Smith here, right in the middle of the screen, was grabbed, really, by Mossy Cade. Now coming across the middle, the ball is thrown behind him. Stout delivers, and 
gets a little emotional about it. You ought to be a little careful to guard those legs. You don't want to leave your feet too often. Bob Parsons will punt on fourth and four. Pretty good hang time for Parsons. And they'll mark it up around the 48-yard line. Check that the 38. When Memphis comes back, they'll have it. And they still own a touchdown lead. A couple of seconds left in the third quarter. 24-17. Memphis leading Birmingham. Eastern Division race of the USFL is getting tighter. That's Derek Crawford. First down to midfield. Irby Spencer made the stop. They are giving Crawford a big cushion. There's a fake of an inside track. Watch Crawford start the drive downfield. There's a step or two. Then he comes back, gets Tyrone McGriff and Louis Sharp out in front of him to get the defenders as they react up. It was his quickness. It's a good game. Below the Mason-Dixon line, two southern rivals doing battle, and the showboats leading by a seven. We understand his right thigh has been iced down, and it doesn't appear as if he'll make it back into the game. That's crucial as we head down towards the last 15 minutes of play. The tight end gathers in the Kelly Ariel at the 42 of Birmingham. Irby Spencer in on the stop for the Stallions. Mickey Sutton also there, and it's Sutton that's feeling the pinch of the hit. On many occasions, Tim, Memphis is sending their two wide receivers deep, their tight end down the middle, and the backs cross short, and they keep hitting those backs short in front of the linebackers, but the defense is... Going deep. There's Sutton. Gets a hard stick there on Rao, but apparently shakes himself up. Sutton, Rao too, is shaken up on the play. Sutton is only 5'9", 173. He may have pinched a nerve there in his neck or damaged the shoulder. 24-17 the count. Tim Spencer's bottled up. Literally everyone in the forward wall of Birmingham and on the stop. I don't think he got the first down. Oh, he's a yard short. Yep, it's going to be third down and a yard. The ball at the 41 of Birmingham. This is a drive that could loom largely for that guy and his staff up by a touchdown and in control with good field position to start things in the fourth quarter. Good field position. This uh, type of situation where I would think, and these are only guesses, that he's going to run the ball rather than try to play action. Slot right, Moser in the slot. Spencer follows up the gap and it's hard to tell. Planton, Spencer, Sales, among others. They've gone over that left side, and here they go again in short yardage, and they're really not getting it. They get pretty good takeoff there by Sharp and uh, McGriff, but there's still not a lot of running room. Irby Spencer coming around the outside to make the stop, and here's a very crucial call if he didn't make that first down. By the way, the bandage coming off of Joe Cribbs, we understand that right side, so we may, we may be seeing him again after all. If they don't make the first down here with a seven-point lead, will they go for it on the 40-yard line? I think it's close enough that they probably will. Pepper Rogers will have to toe the line. About an inch to go. About an inch. He's about a toe away. Well, I think he's going to go for it. They're going to talk about it, though. They're going to talk for an hour and a half and run a quarterback sneak here. <laughs> <laughs> The call here is quarterback sneak when you got an inch to go. Kelly with that proverbial who done it look on his face. Yeah. Raleigh Dosh in the pass is one with good team defense, and they will be tested right here. 13 and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Memphis leading by a touchdown. The biggest thing you fear in this situation is ball exchange in the state. Here we 
again, look at the right side now, the showboat line, firing a wedge block. You see them all blocking down. They're not blocking men, they're blocking areas, trying to create, create some type of swath so that Parker can get yardage. Here we see the two backs taking off straight ahead. The other running back in the game at the time could not have gotten ahead of Parker with his straight force to the hole. First down and 10, the ball at the 39 of Birmingham. Seven-step drop, which means it's going to be a deep route. Look to the outside. There's an open lane. There's look to the outside. Brought defenders out there. And Moser very sure-handed. Adding again to that large average per catch. First and ten. The ball marked at the 12-yard line. That's quarter. Stopped by Padgett. up running backs for Memphis. They've carried the load tonight for Pepper Rogers' club. This is a little bit like the old backfields that the Minnesota Vikings used to have. They, they had a start too, but four of them played just about equal amount during the game. That's what's happening tonight so far as the role being played by Porter and Parker. Second and six, the ball at the seven. Memphis can get a first down without the benefit of a touchdown. Porter has it to the five. along with Rowe and on the stop for Birmingham. We're saving the ground again. Coming over that left side where they seem to be having a little more trouble running tonight. With a good hard stick in there by one of the linebackers whose number we can't identify from this angle. Staff Sales is the guy. Staff Sales out of the University of Missouri. Not a starting linebacker. He started a few games a year ago in a backup role now but he came up with a big hit. Ten and a half minutes to play in the game. 24-17 Memphis. Third and three. Sydney. First down. Sydney picked his feet up there to elude a tackle, which would have brought him up short of the first down. Here he is. He looks downfield for Moser. Moser's covered. So he feels the ball. Three. He changes balance. Another angle, same thing. Finally, a tackle being made by linebackers coming from the inside. I'm very impressed by the Birmingham linebackers, but they've been fighting a very bitter retreat here with Memphis after picking up that fourth down play out at the 40 and then hitting a big pass to Moser have moved inside the two yard line. Sydney just gutted that one out, eluding Woodbury. First and goal at the two. Touchdown. Sydney made it look easy. again. A nice lead block by Ricky Porter. And they're in easily. David Huffman, number 56, normally a tackle with playing tight end on the left side there, which they do in short yards and goal line situations. In fact, earlier this year he caught a touchdown from that spot. Duncan to tackle on the point. They love it in Memphis. 
their showboat trying to go six and five and vault right into the thick of the Eastern Conference race. Again, another look at the touchdown. Low blocks all the way. Ricky Porter sort of cleaning up whoever might come from the inside. Goes into the end zone. 31 to 17 our score. We'll return to the Liberty Bowl in just a moment. Birmingham leading it three games to none coming in and really outscoring the show boats by plenty. Now suddenly things have changed. Harry Sidney and company two touchdowns in this half and it's a 31-17 showboat lead. blue-collar worker on special teams and as a running back, stopped by Daryl Goodlow. They'll mark it at the 28 where it will be first and 10 and Joe Cribbs is back. Sore thigh and all, when you're down by a couple of touchdowns, you have to play. You have to play and he's a tough young man. Birmingham now, there's no Birmingham game plan. They certainly have a chance, here's Cribbs, they certainly have a chance to still pull it out, but they've got a deviate from the style that has them win seven games so far this year. Down the wall. Fumble. Picked up by Reggie White. Touchdown Memphis. Flags are down. Oh, it's just debris. It was the beanbag uh, there, Jim, with a throw at the spot of a turnover ball possession chain. Here we see Stout dropping back. A lot of rush coming in here from the backside. Calvin Clark has had a heck of a game. Knocks it free from the ball. Reggie picks it up with a whole group of blockers. Jim Smith tries to tackle him on the six-yard line, but Reggie carries him in, and they're up now by 20 points. Carlton Rose had one of those takeaways when they last met in Birmingham, but they came up 15 points shy that time. Right now they're up by 20. 37 to 17. What a break. Well, they've scored three times in the second half. One by a turnover and one set up by a turnover. So uh, two of the touchdowns coming by virtual turnover, something that was, uh, Birmingham could not afford to do. We have a red flag. Holly Dosh complaining. He's going to challenge it. So we did have a flag throw. It just wasn't yellow, it was red. <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> Boy, are you and I told you so. <laughs> All right, there, there's previous challenges, 31 to 6. And Birmingham has gotten one reversal this year. Memphis has come up with not a senor. Pass at the arm, it's still been going up. The touchdown. Even though his hand moved forward, I think it had stopped. He was now trying to possess the ball yeah. to run with it rather than as a passing action. Let's take a look, though. There he is one more time. Now he starts to come forward. to pass. Now he's trying to put, no, no longer a passing action. He had stopped it, and then the ball was knocked from his hand. Alvin Clark knocks it loose. Reggie White got six. What had been a tight ball game is now turning into a possible blowout. The Memphis Showboats have unlocked some of Marv Levy's keys to victory, and they're up by 21. Memphis has really dominated this game since the beginning of the second half, Marv. They have. They certainly have. Their defense has been awfully big, of course, hitting hard and been playing very aggressively. McFadden and Caruth are awaiting the Duncan pickoff. Caruth gathers it in. He's up to the 29-yard line. Coakley, among others, in on the pile for the showboats and now Birmingham trailing by 21 must strike and strike quickly and you look at those numbers and you, you get the idea perhaps they have that chance. Well they have tools, they have the players that can do well. Flip Stout, Jim Smith, Joe Cribb, 
unfortunately for them, uh, Joy Jones out of the lineup tonight and Daryl Mason a fine tight end. But it gets more difficult, of course, because everybody knows what they have to do now. That might sprinkling a drawer to it now and then, but it's a passing game from here on. Cribs does remain in the game, the single setback here. In traffic, McFadden comes up with it. Hammond there to make the stop. Sam Clancy, number 90 in red, right at the middle of your screen there. Putting on some heat, going against uh, Buddy Adelette. And <laughs> Adelette thinks Stout should let it go. He protected pretty well, but Clancy gets a good hard stick on Stout. And this is a time now when the quarterback takes some real licks because everybody's going to be close to him even when he does get the ball out. Four down linemen now for Memphis. John Banizak has come in. Joel Cole stopped by Corker off the reception up to about the 38. As you mentioned, Tim, they have four linemen to get more pressure. Now Reggie White is playing over the guard now, number 92 in red, rushing against Pat Phoenix, 71. He's close. As the ball is released, he's legal, but uh, this is bruise time for the quarterback. There are those that would debate the maneuver putting Reggie White at nose tackle as opposed to defensive end with his pass rushing ability. Stout. Going for all of it, and it's way overthrown. McFadden, the intended receiver. McFadden, well covered by John Besselou and another secondary defender. First and ten in this situation is the time to go that deep. And they are guessing that Memphis will do some blitzing on that first and ten. And it's not a bad calculated guess, even though that instance it didn't pan out. Pepper Rogers says his brand of football is an attitude. Pepper ball is nothing more than an attitude. Positive thinking. He's got this ball club playing positively tonight. Cribs has come out of the game now. Set backs to split. Earl Gant has checked in for Cribs. Stout. Eludes pressure and finds McFadden for the first down at the Memphis 45. Leonard Coleman there. To make the stop. They're going now with a lot of wide receivers, Birmingham. Secondary was up close like they were going to blitz. Then they drop off, covering zone. Bad McFadden, rookie. He set the fine pass receiver now in the game, makes that catch. We're back to live action. That's Earl Gant. Inside the 40 to the 39. Sam Clancy coming over from his defensive end spot to make the stop. The last four possessions for Birmingham have been tough. Fumble, miss a field goal, punt, and fumble again. All of them starting from deep in their own territory, inside their own 30-yard line. It's tough to go the long way, particularly when you're behind by a little bit. Memphis went ahead early in the fourth. Stallions going without the benefit of a huddle on second and six. Cribs found the hole and has the first down, it appears. At the 31, Fanizak and Clancy both in to make the stop for the showboats. Clancy is playing a fine game tonight. He hadn't lived up to what they had hoped when he came over from the Maulers. He'd been somewhat injured with a mild hamstring pull, but it's very restrictive. He's having fun tonight, playing better than I've seen him play all season. 38-17, the showboats leading. We were tied at 17 at halftime. First and 10, stop to the air again. Toller covered nicely by Coleman. Coleman and Cade, two first-round NFL picks by San Diego and Indianapolis. With the help of Besselow and company, they're a better unit. Towards the end of the play, Stout delivering with a two or three of the showboats around him, making him hurry his throw. Leonard Coleman closing fast on Kenny Toller. But he's, Stout is not being able anymore, Tim, to really set up in a cup, read the coverage, and step up. He's scrambling about and delivering. Six minutes and 13 seconds are left. Dosh at Northern Michigan to the left, and Pepper Rogers, all those great years at Georgia Tech, UCLA. Now in the United States Football League, and they're still earning their keep. Rogers made some moves that cost this franchise a lot of money to win and win soon and make the playoffs. Obtaining Besselous and Louis Sharps. So far, he has told the line and has done the tightrope back nicely here in Memphis. 
Second down and 10 with 6.13 to play in the game. The Showboats leading 38 to 17. That's Cole to the 24-yard line. Steve Hammond making the stop. Calling Steve Hammond's name a heck of a lot tonight. Actually, Coles was not the expected receiver. They're going to hurry up offense, even though there's six minutes left. They've been going that way. They have to. Three touchdowns down. Coles again lining up to pick up a blitz that comes from Corker. Corker still gets through, not in time, and the pass incomplete. <laughs> Clancy, the sign of victory. He's six feet, seven inches tall. He can get his hands up and do a lot of deflecting. Here's Stout again, having to throw off balance with some heat coming. Hand goes up from the celebration we saw afterward. Probably Sam Clancy he got his hand in the way. Cribs is still out of the game. It is. I beg your pardon, he's back in. Cribbs is back in, and he's got it. Nailed at the 18-yard line. Bussey, along with Brett Williams, on the stop. Williams in for Reggie White for the moment. This is a good drive. They are not playing prevent defense. People might think that because they're moving down the field this way, but it's a good drive under a lot of pressure. Smith and McFadden are the wide receivers. McFadden at the top of your screen on first and ten. And he goes to Toler. Touchdown! Stout crossed up Memphis defensively that time. They had three wide receivers in the game. McFadden, Smith, and Toler. Again, you see Corker pushing, you see Hammond pushing. 53 and 54. So it's all-man coverage. Barney Bussey, somewhere or other in those crossing patterns, loses his coverage on Toler, and he high steps it in. And they should be, if they make the point, within 14 again. Another look. It's a crossing pattern with your run when you're anticipating man-to-man. -man. It works. But you better pick up a lot of those blitzes to make it work. Out of the hold of Bob Land, the kick by Miller is good. We said it could happen. With five minutes and 15 seconds left, there's still that possibility. Well, there's enough time. 14 points down, a little more than five minutes to go, and you've just scored, and you've got good weapons. Certainly there's time. Now, this is where a running game is real important, too. If Memphis can eat some time off with their running game, it becomes very important. I know Bill Walsh from San Francisco 49ers, while he doesn't feature the running game first, feels it's so important late in the game when you have to eat time off the clock and the run is the likely play that you'll still be able to make it work. Raleigh Dodge has to feel a little bit better right now about his team's chances with 5.15 to play. One of the better drives of the night. 11 plays, 72 yards. Four minutes and 20 seconds off the clock. Perhaps more time than you'd like if you're a Stallions fan, but they got the job done. Toller out of Ole Miss and for Joey Jones tonight. Coming up with the touchdown, 18 yards from Stout. They are playing now onside kick defense. Nine men, ten men within 10 yards of the restraining line. Henry Williams is back deep, but everyone else is up front. They have one man deep, and the, the tough part about this is, now they're, re maybe they were going onside kick. Now they're going to re-huddle and talk it over, figure, well, we'll kick deep and take our chances playing defense. They've got a good defensive team. It's like a basketball coach taking time out, wondering what defensive deployment he'll look at. He sees the zone, calls another timeout, and says, okay, let's set this up now. Well, I'm sure there's a similarity to what you just said. Um, well, it was an in-betweener, right? Williams gets it at the 22 and fumbles it. He did come up with it, though. 
mark it at the 23-yard line. It's an in-betweener, but I don't understand why. If you're going to onside kick, onside kick, if you want to pit him deeper, kick it deeper. I, that one I don't understand at all, unless they felt that they could maybe recover that as a style of onside kick. They have come up with one fumble recovery on a kickoff tonight. Williams popped one Offside up and led to a touchdown. For 23 on the kicking team, line, first down. Well, you got the same bad result that you sometimes get when going for an onside kick. The other team got the ball. Here's your offside. Second man in from the bottom of your screen. Offside, across the line when the ball is kicked. Mike Kelly, 19 of 26, 195 yards, couple of touchdowns, one interception. He and Stout have been outstanding tonight here at the Liberty Bowl. 38 to 24, Memphis leading with four minutes and 50 seconds left. Porter gets it. Ken Kelly made the stop. Kelly, who had shoulder problems, arm problems coming out of college, costing some when coming out in the draft. Many felt he'd be a number one round pick, and that wasn't the case. Stymied his career early, but Pepper Rogers had confidence in him. There were those that were quite critical when Walter Lewis was replaced, but even Lewis is happy with what he's seen so far, and we have too much time here. You know, Lewis with the numbers he's had, and you look at Kelly now, but you'd think Lewis would be a little upset with, with what's transpired. He's posted some great numbers for that guy, and yet is on the bench tonight. Well, he's not the type of person to be upset. His team is winning. I made the comment last week, despite the fact he's thrown 15 touchdowns at four interceptions. Pepper gave his reasons. That he felt the team needed a change of tempo. He's got a lot of career ahead of him, Walter Lewis. He certainly hasn't reflected any dissatisfaction. He aided the team on the opening play. Set up the first scoring drive of the game. Second and 14. That's Porter again. Coming out of the backfield to pick up a healthy chunk of yardage. Stopped at the 29-yard line. Bill Rowe made the stop in his sixth year out of Colorado. Rowe continuing to make a lot of tackles for this club. But well, here's a very crucial play. If they can pick up the first down, they can probably take it down at least to the two-minute warning before having to punt it away, sitting on a two-touchdown lead. Birmingham has two timeouts remaining. Memphis with their full complement of three here in the second half. Third down and four. That's Sydney. First down, Shobo. What Kelly has done is something very difficult to get quarterback to do. Rodier short man. Harry Sidney, 24, looks for a blitz. None's coming. He hooks up in a little crease between the two linebackers, Taft Sales and Bill Rowe. Catches it. It's not going to look big, four or five-yard completion, but it's very big. Maybe big enough to say that the game has been put away unless something very unlikely were to happen. Mike Kelly. Big, big night for him. On first and ten, Sidney gets the call and has five more. Chewing up the yardage. Row again, along with Herbie Spencer, to provide the coverage. And Raleigh Dosh wants it and gets the timeout. Raleigh wasn't going to let full 30 seconds run off the clock down to the two-minute warning, but they only have one left. Second down, five yards to go. Ball at the 40. 38 to 24. Memphis leading. Sydney breaks free again, and he's nearly into first down territory. Dave Purifoy made the stop for Birmingham. No measure. Ben Smith firing out there on Bill Rowe, getting into him, then looking behind, but he gets good movement on him. Very close.
first, if not a first down, very close to it. Ken Smith out of Miami of Ohio in his third year. They are just a stone throw away. They've been that close three times tonight. Look at that one. Ten times last time they played each other. Tonight, no sacks. Why? Better players up there, the addition of Louis Sharp and Bollinger. But a game plan which allowed them to throw short. And Mike Kelly, a quarterback who can read and throw short against the blitz. Now, look at Walter Lewis. He's in that game. And uh, there, there, there's no animosity or hurt feelings there. He's part of this football team, and he shows it. There's nothing phony about it. Third down, and again, as we mentioned, less than a yard to go. I believe we may have had another timeout call. made the stop it appears he has the first down Anthony Parker out of Memphis State gets the first down for the showboats again over the left side in the short yardage goal line 38 24 Memphis two minutes left the Birmingham Stallions out of all their timeouts just a question of time now This will be a sweet win for Memphis, their first ever against Birmingham. They call this locally, as in all the newspapers, Revenge Bowl II. Both coaches agreed that winning this game was especially important because the two clubs really don't have a great liking for one another. So well, Dosh has great respect for Rodgers and Pepper of him. Well, they do. They stood together and talked before the game. It must have been 20 minutes while their teams were warming up. Opportunity to talk with some of the stars of this game by game's end. You know, I don't think they're going to be able to use all two minutes by just sitting on the ball the way they are. They've got to get the next snap. Well, they can almost use it. they got to get the next snap off all with about 40 seconds to play. Here are the updated Eastern Conference standings off this game now. Birmingham will drop to 7-4. Memphis at 6-5. Tampa Bay and Jersey still at 7-3, but you can't rule out Jacksonville yet. Lindy and Fadi's team also with just five losses. They're coming on very well. Now it's going to be fourth down coming up. Oh, they'll just be about 30 seconds back there. 37 now. Finland has spot the ball. Oh, they, they can take it right down to the wire. They can just stay in the huddle. Let it run out. Raleigh Dosh won when he had to win when the franchise was on the line. Pepper Rogers had been receiving much criticism, made some moves, moves some people didn't like or agree with. Since that time, his club has come through. It's all over. The Memphis Showboats have beaten Birmingham 38-24 and will return to a happy Liberty Bowl in just a moment.